I use this portion as a basis for sharing three things. Um, three things. This is what the Lord spoke to me for not only Living Word, but the Hampton Roads type of area the region here, or the district. Concerning the body. The, number one, he says, we are to live lives consistent with what we believe. We are to live lives consistent with what we believe. We are to walk the walk. We are to talk the talk. The second thing he said was, He wants us to know that it is just as much the will of God to heal the body as it is for him to heal the soul. For us to know that it is just as much the will of God to heal the body as it is to heal the soul. And the third thing he said, let God heal the deep places in your lives. Let God heal the deep places why I was commending Josephine when she was just saying it right on the money. Sometimes she said that we don't know what's in our heart. Sometimes we do not know the condition of our hearts. But guess who does? God does. So it means that we must remain open, believing and yielding to the working of the Holy Spirit at all times. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. He knows our frame. So let us go to the first thing that he said. We are to live lives consistent with what we believe. John says in chapter 1, this is the message which we've heard from him, heard of him from the beginning, and we're declaring this message to you, that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship and communion with him and walk in darkness, there is inconsistency. Are you with me? He said we lie and do not the truth. So there were those in John's day that said they were who they were not. And John was speaking to the little church, young church here about being aware of those that would say they were truly called or apostles and those that were supposed to be what they say they were but they were not their lives 
were not consistent with what they say they believe. So God said that we, his people, are to live lives that are, in, that are consistent with what we profess. Right? And that's so important. So consist inconsistencies. I was saying, well, Lord, what, what, is, what is it that you want me to understand? He said, there are inconsistencies. And then inconsistent, not or at variance with one's own principles. Disagreement between two statements, which means that both cannot be true. If we say that we are righteous, then we must do righteousness. John said, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. So the Lord is making our profession and our character synchronized, become consistent, right? That means the things that we say must be consistent with what we believe. And so if you're wondering what's going on and what God may be saying and doing, this is one of the things that he said. Those that are watching this by way of television, you have questions about your life and what is going on and you're wanting to see some changes and you're wondering why challenges are facing you, then know this, that God is making consistent or harmonizing your confession with your lives and your character. God is making them one. What you see is what you get. That's who we are. We're not chameleons. We, we are not those that change when we're behind closed doors, isn't that right? God is saying with my all-seeing eyes, I want you to know that my presence is everywhere. And when you live, you're living a life before me. And when you know that you're living a life before me, wherever you are, you know that I'm there. And you know that I see everything. Isn't that right? So we are not living to please mankind. Are you with me? But we're living to please God. The one that's going to in the end give us a reward for our obedience to him. Is that clear to everybody? He said, I want my people to live lives consistent with what they believe. If a man is in church on Sunday and glorifying God and at the joints or the places where they're getting together to go, go joints and so on, peeking at women, then there's an inconsistency. Are you hearing me? It doesn't work that way. Because the same God that sees me here on Sunday morning praising God is the same all-seeing eye that's watching me when I'm in the dark places and I don't want anybody to know my secrets. He has all-seeing eyes. He said, I want to harmonize the lives. We 
walk in doubt and confusion, then it's inconsistent with who we are. The blood was sprinkled for obedience. So he sees us as obedient children, isn't that right? Walk in the light as he, ooh, I feel the anointing, is in the light. Let your light so shine before men or humanity, right? That they may see your good works and in turn do what? Glorify the Father which is in heaven. We're not living for ourselves. Living to please God. That's why we have to be saved, right? They that are in the flesh cannot please God. But thank God the Bible says, but you are not in the flesh if the Spirit of God is in you. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Mm. So we must walk in the light as he's in the light. He that says that he has a relationship with God and walks in darkness is lying. And he's deceiving himself. Because in him there is no darkness at all. My God. My God. That sounds simple enough, but it's so profound. And God is speaking to the body now. It's not only this place here, but to the body. Because the time is such that God wants his bride to be prepared for his return. Let's examine what he said. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle ladies when you are preparing for a wedding and you've got this beautiful garment it's white but it's wrinkled it's beautiful but it's wrinkled or it's beautiful but it's got a spot or stain. Now you know how that makes you feel, right? So he's saying, I'm making my people's lives consistent with what they profess. He that says he knows God, he ought to walk as God walked. So I said, oh, you can't do that. Well, why in the world did he tell us to do it? Is God slow? Is he, is he, is he slow to, to comprehend? And I just shall live by faith. So we must work on the inconsistencies. Allow God, you know, because we're living before him. I tell the story all the time when I was in sales. The guys couldn't hardly wait to get away from their wives. And uh, I'm talking to somebody here on TV and, you know, just says, ouch, you know, I, I, I need this right now. They couldn't hardly wait to get away from their wives. So here I am in this group. And, uh, one, one, one lady told me, she said, you don't belong there. You don't, you don't belong in this. And I couldn't figure out what she was talking about. Basically, she said, she said it's, it's kind of dirty the way retailers work. And you, you striving to be a manager, you don't know half of what goes on here. You sure you want to be a, a, a retail manager? And, uh, but they would, we would get away from home and they take their booze and I'm riding with them and they um, go down to the dance floor. They had this 
club downstairs and we checked in the motel. And met at one of the person's room there and they were drinking. And, you know, so I, I said, well, I'll be in my room. They said, well, come on over. I said, no, I'll be in my room. But they kept pressing me and uh, finally I told them, well, I don't drink. Man, I mean, you would have thought that I said something real bad. There was a pain in their eyes when they, when they, I had to examine. I said, what did I just say? No drink. Not even a beer. I said, no. They looked at me as though, you poor soul, you, you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business here. <laughs> and one of them looked at me, the district manager looked at me, with sadness in his eyes. He said, He was right. He was right. <laughs> Living lives consistent by God with what we believe. If you believe that God is holy, let's be holy. Set apart. Right? I dare say the body of Christ is, is, is some problems from leadership on down. Because some started out either too early or no one dared to tell them the truth. You can't live like that. And represent God. You can't do it. Because the Bible says. Be sure. Okay I know I'm coming out a little tough. But I, be sure. Don't, 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 don't be confused about this matter. That your sins. Are going to find you out. They'll track you down. Now in, in, in the country. We had little dogs called bloodhounds. And they would use in hunting. And when they would, sometimes a hunter would have two or three dogs. And then when they were going hunting a rabbit, those bloodhounds could smell. And boy, they once they got the scent of a rabbit, you heard them, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and the hunter knew they were on to something. Uh-oh, you're on the trail of a rabbit. They wouldn't stop until they find that rabbit, no matter where he was. <laughs> the Bible says, be sure that your sins will find you out. They'll track you down like a bloodhound. Hallelujah. Isn't that right, y'all? If I'm telling the truth, let's give him a little praise here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. But the Lord wants us to live consistent lives. Hallelujah. And then the second thing he says. We are to know that it is as much the will of God to heal the body as it is to heal the soul. And I got saved. They didn't talk a whole lot about healing the body. So what they emphasized, that's what I got. I got salvation. But I didn't get it in full because they didn't teach it in full. Isn't that right? But the whole of the counsel of God is this. God wants your body, my body, your body to be healed. The scriptures, the gospels are complete with the expression of the will of God. For humanity. It is the will of God that our bodies be healed. I, now I know there are no, a lot of reasons why we may not receive or it may not manifest that healing. But I am speaking from the word of God the truth about it. It is as much God's will 
that our physical bodies be healed as it is the soul. We are, to, we are to have the same attitude about sickness as we do sin. Someone says, uh, can you, if you try to tempt a person to go out and live a, an adulterous or fornicating life, and you're a Christian, you live in God, oh, no, you're crazy, I would not do that. Because you realize it's sin, right? And there are other things that we recognize that it's sin, so we won't dare. Well, the same attitude that we have about sin, we're to have about sickness. Sickness is a foreign and an alien in our bodies. Somebody say, have you ever been sick? Oh, yeah, definitely. But I'm, hey, look, I'm not called to preach my experience. I'm called to preach the word of God because my experience won't save you. But the word of God will save you. God wants us healed. If you've ever had any doubt, if you, if you have some, some doubts in the crevice of your mind that God doesn't want you to be healed, I want you to hear this today. God Almighty sent His Son to die to take your place so that you can receive the full benefits of Calvary. He died when he hung there on the cross. And before his last breath, he said, It is finished. And somewhere between that and uh, the church being birthed, he offered his blood on the altar of God. That blood. Satisfied the wrath of God for all of humanity. So the spell of sin and evil was to be broken. It was broken through Calvary. It was broken through Calvary. So when Jesus came in light of going to the cross, he showed the will of God. He healed every kind of sickness. He healed every kind of disease. He delivered people from demon power and oppression. He came to set the captives free. That's what he's doing. He hasn't changed his mind. He's still setting people free. So I want you to Think again, look again, and say, this is the will of God that I be healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. It is the will of God. Hampton Roads, Tidewater, it is God's will. Don't you, as I said on the last time, put a lot of stipulations as to why you think God is not healing you. Drop them and begin to believe today that God loves you enough to send his son to die for you that you might have full right to life eternal. You didn't pay the price, you can't pay the price. Neither can you when you decide you want to get better. But if you can only all things are possible to them that believe. We learn, learn on the other week when we hear the Lord say, stop, dis, stop disqualifying my people. Got to do this, got to do this, got to do that, got to do that. He said, stop it. That's what one pastor said. The Lord told him, just stop disqualifying my people. Let them believe and be healed. I mean, they want that healing flow of God's power. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody said, well, Joe ain't living right. Well, that's between Joe and God. But if Joe can believe God that he died for his sins, if Joe can believe that and receive 
from God because the price has been paid. Joe can be healed and you might be sitting there needing the healing because you're thinking you got to get this and you got to get that. I tell you the story when I first came into Pentecost. I had this guy, he was an old drunk alcoholic, mostly. I won't say what else he was. But he came into the faith. He saw people getting help. He had never seen anything like it. So he said, come back. Whatever is jumping on these people, I'm going to get on the front row, and he's going to jump on me. Well, he got saved. Got healed. Here I was, suffering something in my body. You know, thinking. So when these people start getting healed, and I said, God, what's the deal? So I kind of got a little beside myself because, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm living right. I'm living right. So, I mean, what's the deal, God? God says, it's not by your good work now. If, if it was by your good works, there's no need for me to go to Calvary. But when you and I know that we could not, we cannot fix ourselves, We'll stop trying to fix ourselves. Now you didn't get that. Once we understand that we cannot fix ourselves, we'll stop trying. We'll enter into rest. So I'll say so you'll get that next week. Soul rest. So it's God's will just as much to heal the body. Now in these services, God, the Holy Spirit, can so easily begin to move as I'm preaching the word. You can't see him moving, but he's moving. One lady said a few weeks ago, we were just talking about healing from the pulpit, just talking and announcing God's new good news of healing. And all of a sudden, she felt something warm moving on her leg. And she was totally healed. What I'm trying to do is prepare your mind to know that God will not be limited unless we limit him. He is here to heal the sick. He's here to deliver the oppressed. Hello. It is his will. So if you're here today and you've been carrying a sickness, why not? Lay aside everything that tells you that God is not interested in healing you now and receive Conditions will be healed when we agree with God, right? When we agree with God. Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we reading a certain book about Christ the healer. One of the things he said, God promises, God's promises are each a revelation of what God is eager to do for us. His promises are each a revelation of what God is eager to do for us. All his works are done in faithfulness to his promise. Faith is based on the word of God alone. 
All the gospel is for every creature in all nations. It tells man what God's will is. Himself bear our sicknesses. One writer said, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, sins, hidden sins, and who healeth all thy diseases. Are you with me? All diseases can deal with the physical. No. All the iniquities can deal with the sins, right? The body and the soul. Somebody say it with me. The body and the soul. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. And healeth all thy diseases. Sins and sicknesses, soul and body. Are you with me? Himself took our infirmities, bear our sicknesses, body or soul and body. Say it with me again. Soul and body. David said, one little thing, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I hold to iniquity in my heart, if I hold on to it, the Lord will not hear me. David said that in the word of God in Psalms. So there's a place of yes for repentance or confession. So we should not ignore any part of the gospel and the seed that's keeping buried in our hearts. If you haven't manifested the healing power of Jesus, let's use the word, let's take the word and begin to each day get it and make it a part of our lives. And that word is the seed. Once that seed gets in the soil of the heart, and if it's watered through the reminder as we read it each day, it gets buried, and all of a sudden it's going to take fruit, take root. And then, of course, as we continue, the word will begin to bear fruit. It's like any natural seed, right? It has to be planted first, right? And after it's watered in a few days, and all of a sudden, it comes up in, in, in time. So uh, uh, the process is very similar in the Word of God. So we've been talking about it for a while now. So somebody's heart is going to catch root. It's going to catch on. A light bulb is going to go off to somebody. All right. So the last thing is this. The second thing, once again, is to know this. I want you to think with me. If you need healing today, know this. It's God's will that you be healed. It's God's will that I be healed. It's God's will that your mother, your grandmother, your neighbor, your friend, your uncle be healed. It's God's will. So tell them, it's God's will that you be healed. And bring people, you know, let them begin to partake of what God has done. And the third thing is... He said, let God heal the deep places in our hearts. I'm going to share with you some of the things that he said. He said, some people's lives are going in circles. Some people's lives are just going in circles. Fear of pain. Fear of control. 
pride. Some people's lives are just going in circles. Fear of submission. And so their lives go on. And he says, for some, this is Hampton Roads, Tidewater, listen. He says, as soon as some start to get anchored, Satan uproot them. They leave and go somewhere else. Talking concerning the churches in the Hampton Roads, Tidewater area. He said, as soon as he starts to anchor them a little more, something happens they don't like. So, Satan uproots them and they go somewhere else. So their roots don't really go deep into the soil of God's word and God's love because they have not allowed him to get past the attitudes of the heart. I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to take this. And I don't have to do this. And I don't have to do that. And so God cannot do what he truly wants to do when it comes to anchoring and healing and stabilizing ourselves in the, in the things of God. Are you accountability, which is very important, right? No man is an island. No, more, no one lives to themselves. We all are accountable to God. God says in these last days, this is what he said, the people that I'm going to be using are those that have allowed themselves, that have allowed me to anchor them and stabilize them because character has been built. And so this last day move is going to be about his holiness. So if a person is being uprooted every time they don't like something, they cannot grow and they cannot develop in character. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's always things there that they won't tolerate. And since it's there, it'll always be there. So Satan will make sure that they will not grow but so much. And he said some people's lives are just going in circles. Christian. Wondering why. Wondering why. God doesn't change. So we have to change. Isn't it right? God doesn't change. Then he says, the, 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 the thing that he said was, let God heal the deep places in our lives. And God reminded me, he says, true hope. Then he said this, which you heard me share. He said, deception in the body of Christ. Deception. Spirits of deception. Lying spirits. Won't let people anchor. Won't let people uh, be anchored and submit and grow and apply. Allow God to apply things in their life. They won't let him. Listening to the wrong spirits. The spirits of this age. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. The spirits of this age are not about accountability. They're not about stability. They, they, they want to do their thing. The spirit of the age. It always gets into the church. But we got to discern the true spirit. true spirit of God. People are submissive. Humble. I don't know, y'all got to hear me now. But people are trying to go up and the Bible says through humility and the fear of the Lord comes riches, honor, and life. Tight, but it's right. something in our lives. 
God don't operate like this world system. God don't operate based on the, the principles of this world system. He doesn't function like that. So people are trying to apply the, 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 the principles of this world system with the church. And it doesn't work. The things of God are spiritually discerned. That's what the Bible says. It takes humility. Find the will and purposes of God. Or dealing with our lives. Dealing with our lives. I'm not going to get into some of the things that are going on in the church at large. He didn't give me to talk about that right now. I don't know a lot about it, but he didn't give me to go there because I'm not going to try to go there. But let me conclude right here with this, what he says. To let God heal the deep places in our hearts. Say, God, what you mean? He said, there are spirits of trauma. Spirits that came in during the traumatic times in people's lives. Death, accidents, you name it, all kinds of things that brings trauma. Spirits of fear, infirmity, ancestral spirits as well, passed on down. One guy, preacher said, my mother, this was my mother, she had a bad temper. That thing is in me. He was trying to defend his attitude. The ancestors, you don't need that. Oh boy, it's quiet in here. You don't, you don't need that. I don't care who passes it down to you. If it ain't in line with the scriptures, you don't need it. God wants to transform us. He wants to change us. I said, my mother always, I heard her always talk about people. You don't need that. You don't need that. Let God change you. Let him change you. Isn't that right? Let him change you. Person says, I'm outspoken. I'm always outspoken. I'm going to speak my mind. If that was passed down to you, you don't need that. Let God change you. Find a way of humility. That's how God brings you up. Okay, there. Get me up here. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that God said the church is like people are going around in circles trying to do something for God. When all these inconsistencies in a person's life, the devil's going to target those things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's going after the juggler, man. He's not playing. God wants to prepare his church. He wants to prepare his church. So now, thank you, Joseph, for sharing that. You could have said, ain't nothing wrong with me. You, you just missed it. I've heard people say that. Well, I'm standing up here, but I, I, I don't say nothing. <laughs> Not open. God wants to go there. It involves faith. It involves trust. Now, if God's going to remove the inconsistencies from our lives, He's going to do that. If we're going to walk in, if we're going to walk with Him, if we're going to walk with Him, when He's ready to deal with areas, let's let Him do it. Right? He knows. He, he's not a hard taskmaster. He's a good God. So when He comes to areas, that means we're long overdue. But if we cooperate with Him. He'll work it out. He'll bring wholeness. Hallelujah. We want to live lives consistent with what we believe. If we believe that God is holy, 
let's strive to allow him to make us holy, separate from sin and evil. God will do it. And he wants to heal the physical bodies. Let God release healing. I don't know how, but he does it because he cares. We're just vessels, isn't that right? All of us are just mere, we're his people, but we're mere instruments. Glory comes from God. Last thing I'm going to say is to let God heal the deep places in our hearts. He said they're witchcraft spirits. So I've decided that with the help of the Lord, we're going to start teaching more about the working of spirits. That which he's given us and that which we understand and the hope that he is going to show us more and teach us more as we go. Witchcraft spirits. This is what he said. Spirits of rebellion. Witchcraft spirits. Spirits of in intimidation. Controlling spirits. Gossip. Slander. Critical spirits. Spirits of hate, bitterness, and anger, and unforgiveness. And these spirits will keep a person from ever arriving at the plateau that God has for them. And they may go around in circles, but when God heals the deep places, God changes us, we become beautiful. We become beautiful. Others see the beauty and they say, wow, I want to be like that person. Beauty. He said, I will beautify the meek. The salvation, not the proud. I will beautify the meek with salvation. God wants to do what nobody can do. I'm the first partaker of crying out to God. Heal those deep places, God. We're not here for show. We want what God wants for our life. This is not one person that wants to stand before God. And say, well, I knew this, but I, I just, I wouldn't let go. This is not one of those that want to do that. No, sir. So it's first to us. We don't take lightly what God is saying. We, God wants to model, for some reason, the church. I say for some reason. He wants to model this church. God's always trying to find a model to make a model. It's a pattern for people to look and see that God is able. Isn't that right? A lot of people want to know, can I live this life? Yeah, you can live this life. But there's a cost for the cross. That take it not up his cross and follows me. I don't say what he said, but you know the rest of it. So it's not something that we take lightly and just skinny, giddy headedly, just sailing on into the kingdom and everything is lovely. There's a war going on, brother, sister. There's a war. War. And those hosts of hell are not playing. If we can't love one another down here, you might as well stop playing. You might as well stop playing. He that loveth not. 
not God. Because God is love. Ain't much time left. I don't know who's here today that may not be here next week. I gotta make it serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not getting no brownie points for trying to placate somebody. I, I'm not getting no brownie points for that. So when I stand before God, you can't stand for me, and I can't stand for you. The books are open for my life. What did you do with what I gave you? Were you intimidated by people? Would you, did you hold back the truth so that they couldn't get free? Or did you speak the truth so that I could bring healing to people's lives? God said, let God heal. Thank you that the things that many are crying out for, you spoke to it today. People want to live for you and they want answers to the complexities. They want to know where am I missing it? What do I need to change? It's like God says, I hear your cry. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm speaking to you now. I heard your cry. I see you in your prayer time. I, I hear you groaning and calling upon me. And I'm speaking to you what my mind is. I want to heal those broken places in your lives. I want you to know that my love will reach so deep. sorrows that's been there for so long. And I heard him say, deep resentments. Deep resentments. It's not a shame for us to have the need. It's a shame when we have the need and won't let it help us. Father, I thank you. I've done the best I know how. Let's show you Pray somehow. Someone, Lord, has heard the word. And that somebody will make a difference. Maybe it'll turn someone's life around that was at the verge of just having nothing to do with the church anymore. Maybe. Whatever your purpose is, I thank you. By our hearts and needs. Send help now from your holy throne. The people want to live. Many want to live lives consistent with what they profess. But there are some challenges that they're facing that they can't overcome. Feel that way, let's just begin to thank him that he's hearing us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, we thank you now for hearing our prayers, for hearing our hearts' prayers. And God was saying to me that a good portion of this message is for the Hampton Road Tidewater area. So if I sound like I'm 
pouncing on you. There's a few thousand out there just listening. I don't know the condition, but that's what he told me. He said, many are tired, they're weary. They're so weary. Just at trying to be what God wants them to be. The truth is set free. Don't accept the fact that you can live any kind of way and God will be pleased with your life. Don't accept that. Let's not allow Satan to deceive us. Grace will cover us, but it will teach us how to live. Isn't that right? If a dog, if a, a pig gets pulled out of the mire, and that pig turns around and goes right back into it, you remember Paul talking about that? He sets us free for us to stay free. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah, Jesus.